This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need hosting for your art portfolio, blog, or online store, Squarespace has all the website building, marketing, and analytics tools you need to build a sleek website and grow your brand. Why, hello there. We've discussed it on the channel before, but evil characters are superior in nearly every way. Moral ambiguity, peak, fashion sense, impeccable, and let us not forget, evil is hot. Villains will always possess a certain amount of ambiguous sex appeal that puts law-abiding characters to shame. Which makes me feel a little ashamed of myself because in my eight video span of character design nonsense, I've yet to give these heroic losers anyone to fight against. But I think that I've finally found the perfect inspiration. Rocks. So a couple of weeks ago, I made a video where I turned gemstones into knights. And while I was doing research for that video, I stumbled on a couple of gemstones that were associated with superstitions and bad luck, which made me think, oh, these would be perfect for a team of villains. Those gemstones are black diamond, pearl, and opal, but I didn't feel like using some of those. So today I'll be using obsidian, pearl, and red fire opal. To take a quick gander at my mood boards, I really pulled inspiration from everywhere. Whenever I build mood boards for characters, I usually pin whatever images give me the general vibe that I have in mind. So there's definitely a lot of that in these boards, but I also focused on the general lore of the stones, as well as adding some external elements, like the themes of natural disasters, different mythical symbolism, and of course, just a whole lot of shape language. So obsidian is like a lot of black sharp dresses and volcano imagery, and just a lot of very ominous, powerful looking characters. And pearl is like the ocean and tsunamis and angels, and then also like creepy little girls. And red fire opal is like forest fires and buff strong punchy women and different cool earthy things like petrified wood. So unlike the gem knights, my ideas for these designs are kind of all over the place. So I'm going to start by thumbnailing them out as a group just so that I can try to get some cohesion happening between these very different design ideas. So let's go do that. So like I mentioned in my previous gemstones video, I'm going to begin making myself thumbnail out the teams of characters before I design them so that they look more cohesive and I can experiment with colors a bit more from the beginning. So I just went on my iPad and started by doing rough color thumbnails of each of the characters based on my initial ideas, which proved to be really helpful because before I did the thumbnails for these, I had basically done all the artwork for the designs for this video, ended up not liking them, and decided to start all over again from scratch. So this is basically round two for these characters, and I think this is going to be a good cautionary tale for me because this thumbnailing method was way more effective for brainstorming designs. Whenever I was done with this, I already liked these rough concepts way more than my first designs. So I'm going to start out with Red Fire Opal because she was probably the easiest to nail down design-wise. But first, all evil masterminds need a vehicle for their nefarious plans, which is why my portfolio website is powered by this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace offers dozens of professional and customizable website and portfolio templates tailored for the needs of artists, bloggers, and hot scoundrels with warrants in five countries. Their easy to use website building tools have everything you need to succeed in your heartless ventures. Mine are to personify as many abstract concepts as possible before the YouTube algorithm catches up with me. And now all my designs can be kept in one organized location for potential accomplices to view, thanks to great features like automatic image scaling, which effortlessly arranges all of my artwork into organized chaos as soon as it's uploaded. But that wasn't quite enough disorder in one place for me. Thankfully, I can connect my Squarespace site to my various social media accounts and use a social block to automatically share recent social media posts on my portfolio site. So now I'm able to have my portfolio and Instagram gallery in one unsavory location. And if you have wares to sell, like, I don't know, eyeballs? human lungs. Squarespace also has an excellent e-commerce platform. I link mine directly to my portfolio website so that I can sell my deranged artwork alongside my gallery, which I know is a little bit weak in terms of evilness, but hey, we can't all be winners. For those of you who like to engage in the sin of sloth, like myself, their e-commerce platform can also link directly to my print-on-demand service so that I don't have to lift a finger while selling cursed images to my unsuspecting audience. So if you want to hatch a plan to destroy the world this year, or just start your passion project, head to Squarespace Squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash pricklyalpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Now let's begin converting rocks to human form. 
So like I said, Fire Opal probably went the smoothest because the other two went in some pretty interesting directions, but I'm not complaining because I think they turned out pretty cool. But for Opal, in terms of conceptualizing, I began with the colors and the general feeling of the stone and built from there. My character design method is very much take a bunch of loosely related ideas and attempt to string them together. So I obviously wanted her to be a very fiery character, but I've designed so many fire inspired characters that I didn't want her to look too much like the others. So instead I decided to lean into the colors of the stone because there's a lot of unconventional fire colors happening in there. And instead of fiery, there's colors that feel pretty earthy. And I think that's because my reference was specifically a Mexican fire opal. And there's a lot more color variation in that stone than a typical fire opal. There's reds and magentas, but also browns and even flecks of yellow and green. So pulling from the concept of bad luck and natural disasters, for Fire Opal, I decided to tie in the theme of a forest fire. Historically, some people believe that opals possess the powers of every other gemstone because of all of the flecks of color inside them and were often referred to as the magician stone. And red fire opals are associated with passion, love, and intuition slash gut decisions. So I imagine her powers would function as basically spontaneous human combustion and her entire body could catch flame whenever she wants and do a ton of damage to her surroundings. So her main design element is this overwhelming flaming hair that's kind of inspired by that iconic red hair with blonde highlights look. And I paired that with an armor jerkin and some gauntlets that would allow her to control her power and channel her power so she doesn't just burn everything down all the time. I wanted to use a lot of round and sharp shaped language on this character since I feel like her personality would be grounded but with an edge. So I designed her armor to be pretty abstract and weird, kind of inspired by the look of petrified wood to bring an earthy nod in there. And also gave it these segmented bits of glowing red to give the idea that her powers are channeling through the armor and into her hair and her gauntlets. So of course, I imagine her fighting style would be very up close and brawler, but then she would maybe also be able to use her gauntlets as flamethrowers for some facade and ranged attacks. And since she's such an active character, I also wanted to give her mostly bare arms and legs so she doesn't have anything slowing her down in combat. And I also gave her a pretty athletic looking body type to back that up and gave her skin lots of freckles and sunspots to look like the shards of the stone since her hair is constantly emitting so much heat. And I also gave her a bunch of little scars since she's probably getting beat up all the time from not having that much armor. Since this is a group of three, I also wanted to play around with the idea of different ages and stages of life with a youthful character, more of a middle-aged one, and an older, wiser one. So I figured Red Fire Opal would be that exuberant youthful force, and I think her personality would be very passionate and fun-loving, but also impulsive, rambunctious, and a bit naive. She would be the character in the group that's very eager to do crime and chaos, but who's constantly being reined in by her elders. And I think that's also very on brand for a red fire opal because they're formed when water mixes into silica rich lava in the depths of ancient volcanoes. So I'm pretty sure the daughter of a volcano would be a chaotic free spirit. Also, I'm stupid because I just now realized this at the time of recording, but it makes her basically a perfect mix of the other two characters thematically because of water and lava mixing together. I just wanted to throw that in there. As for the art with these, I went about the actual illustrations in a somewhat unconventional way, but I think it turned out pretty cool for this one. I think working from flat color blocks and then cleaning it up as I make final decisions about the design is a really fun way for me to work because it allows me to try out different things easier than line work does, and it also allows me to work in color from the start so I can definitely see if a design element is working faster than I can if I use lines. I don't know, it's just a very concept arty but enjoyable way to work, and I hope you guys enjoy seeing a bit of a different art style with these. Anyways, up next is Pearl, who I'd say probably turned out the weirdest, but I absolutely love her. So the idea behind Pearl as a bad luck gemstone is kind of strange because all the superstitions are contradictory. For example, some people think pearls are good luck because they symbolize purity, loyalty, and wisdom, and they bring a bride good luck on her wedding day because they keep tears away from her marriage. However, historically, some people believed the exact opposite, that pearls shouldn't be given to or worn by a bride on her wedding day because they symbolize tears, so wearing them would bring tears to her marriage. And some cultures also believe that pearls were the tears of mermaids or angels, so sometimes they're just generally associated with sadness or a future full of sadness. So I basically took each of those ideas and absolutely ran with them. This character is inspired by the ocean and mermaids, fallen angels, creepy brides, basically just every Halloween costume and the discount shop linked together into one, 
horrifying character. So for her general silhouette, I pulled a lot of inspiration from the circular shape of pearls and tried to pair that with the design of classical angels. And in her original design that's unfinished, I leaned even more into the angel thing, but for this one, I decided to pivot a bit more into the themes of the ocean since pearls are formed in mussels and oysters and clams. So I kept the wings in her overall silhouette, but I decided to paint them to look like water and decided to pair that with a pink 1890s inspired wedding dress because whenever I think of pearls, I definitely think of Victorian fashions. And the roundness of the leg of mutton sleeves and the drapiness of the fabric on the skirts was pretty much perfect for what I was going for. And I paired that ensemble with a very circular quad bun hairstyle that I think looked very celestial and alien and kind of reminds me of Sailor Moon. And to pull a bit more from angels and specifically biblically accurate angels and that creepy otherworldly look, I also gave her a whole mess of crying eyes to echo not only the allusion to tears, but also the association pearls have with foresight and predicting the future. And to round her out, because that wasn't quite creepy enough for me yet, I also wanted to lean into the idea of a fallen angel because this character is kind of built off contradictions. So in coloring, I gave all her limbs and her neck this black decaying look and also a tongue of black fire over her head to thematically tie her to the others and to allude that she's a bit of a dark angel. And I say all her limbs because I also added four extra arms by the end. It's maybe a bit overkill, but you know what? I think it adds to the creepiness factor and the overall confusion of the viewer. Now as to where this character would fit in the group, I think she would be the big sister type, overall pretty overprotective and cautious, but also sad and dangerous, on the brink of snapping at any moment. Maybe she was engaged to a hot mer person and they left her at the altar and now she's plotting revenge. Who knows? But I wanted to come up with an interesting weapon to be her tools of vengeance, so I ended up giving her sharpened clamshells that look a little bit like weapon fans that she can control telepathically and whatnot, making her the mid-ranged fighter of the group. I think this weapon is kind of rare and fits really well for her given her ocean origins and the fact that fans are a very 1890s accessory. She can also probably try to drown her enemies in little tsunamis. Which are her water wings made from the ocean water or her literal tears? That is the question. And finally we have obsidian, which isn't really considered a bad luck gemstone per se because I substituted it for black diamond and it technically isn't a gemstone, but it's also not not a gemstone, so I'm cheating even more here. But since obsidian is formed from cold magma, it's associated a lot with pretty bad natural disasters, you know, volcanic eruptions, and obsidian definitely has some lore to match. It represents power, protection, and grounding, and according to one website, it is considered to pierce into the darkness to reveal the truth itself. So since it's a volcanic, glassy mirror rock, I ran with quite a few of those themes. Obsidian is associated a lot with clearing negative energy, which for the purposes of this design, I'm interpreting as absorbing negative energy and then harvesting it for her own diabolical plans. So obviously in the thumbnail, I played a lot into the volcano idea for this design, and for the shape language, I went for a mix of sharp and boxy shapes to give her a more strict, rigid appearance, and gave her silhouette lots of triangles. The general idea behind this character is that she is obsidian incarnate, like actively being made, so maybe she absorbs the negative energy energy around her as the source of her power, and it figuratively cools the heads of her allies and helps them to focus their energies. And in my design, that power also literally flows out of her, creating this moving magma obsidian dress. For her dress, I was very inspired by crisp, classic black silhouettes like these. I think they really embodied the cold rigidity of the obsidian stone, and they also reminded me of a dark motherly role because of Morticia Adams, so I definitely wanted to lean into a matriarchal role for this character. She would be the leader of the group, probably the guiding force because she's the most powerful and she's able to unify the other two characters. So she would play that motherly mentor role, but somewhat of a cold one, more focused on guiding than nurturing her companions. I imagine she would be pretty quiet overall, almost like a dormant volcano until she erupts in a feat of power during battle or shares the occasional admonishment or negative wisdom. As for her weapons and overall abilities, I was very inspired by Cinderfall from Ruby and Kate Blanchett's Hello with the way both characters can form these long, sharp knives out of nearly thin air, so for this character, I imagine she manipulates them from the hot magma coming out of her dress and cools them into whatever shape she wants. Since she's the most powerful, I imagine her telepathic connection to the obsidian is the strongest, making her the long-range fighter, able to sit back and do most fighting mentally. I wanted there to be a balance between the dynamics of these characters since they're a 1790s 
set of three, so I wanted to play into it with their ages, their sizes, and how well they control their abilities. So obviously, Fire Opal is the least experienced and has the most trouble controlling her abilities. Pearl is sort of in this in-between phase where she's able to control them to a certain extent, but can't quite control them well enough for long-range attacks. And Obsidian is at this near Gus Fring level of control, where she's the wisest, most experienced, and able to control her abilities from a long distance, even under a lot of pressure. I think they make for an interesting team, and now that I'm introducing villains, I think there's even more potential for interconnected lore with these thing-based designs that I've been doing, especially since I'm kind of mixing and matching ideas at this point because these are gemstones, but then I've also pulled in natural disasters a little bit. But I think for this universe, it makes sense for gemstones to have powers in common with how they were formed. So even though I'll probably do dedicated natural disaster characters at some point, I don't think these characters are actually going to infringe on those designs. But with that, all the designs are done, and oh boy, did I struggle with these from time to time. I'll also throw the unfinished originals on screen so you guys can see. But overall, I really like how they turned out, even though I struggled especially on Obsidian's face. Oh my gosh, I have no idea why, but I, I guess I was just having a difficult face day. I probably redrew it like four times, and in the end, I'm not even like the most pleased with it. It's okay. But let me know what you guys think of these villains. Let me know if you have any ideas for how or why they became villains and how they fit into this weird universe I'm unintentionally creating. And of course, let me know what you think they should be named. I'll be choosing the names for all six of my gem designs in the next character design video. Hi, and welcome to my evil lair. I mean the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching till the end of the video. I honestly had such a good time working on these designs this week, even though it took me a while to get to a finished product. Honestly, I feel like the last couple of character designs I've done have been kind of mid, but I feel like with these, I'm finally getting back to the swing of things, even though admittedly, these were a little bit rough to work on. But honestly, I think iteration is good practice for me, so it's fine. But anyways, I appreciate your support. If you want to support me even more, you can like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and check out my store. When you do, you'll become an honorary leaf, and you'll join my Legion of Darkness and our quest to cover the entire face of the earth in one giant pile of leaves. I appreciate your service, but now if you'll excuse me, I am very busy. I have to go and plan next week's artistic chaos. Bye!